Welcome back. I'm Ablaut and this is day 47 of my 50 day challenge doing VCV rack experiments. Today I made what you could call an evolution of the patch from day 46 and if you haven't seen that video you should go and watch it as that will explain the basis of this patch and uh, today I was playing around with this patch and I just keep discovering interesting details so what I did was to basically reduce it to one voice in the mixer so I only take interesting detail there only take the output of uh, Camilla into our mixer and that's what you're hearing it is still fed by our two FM ops from Bog Audio delivering us a very lovely industrial sound uh, modulated by well, especially here, Submarine's PO204 um, phase modulation engine. Uh, also the booty shifter and wave shaper here. And uh, very important, Nomad Strange Attractors, which is not in the plugin manager, but if you followed my link from uh, the last video to my Google Drive where I have some uh, VCV rec resources uploaded including some uh, modules that might be hard to find or whatever and um, all my patches for this series although I think I still need to upload the days 46 one but I'll do that anyway um, so I uh, first simplified the patch a little taking out what I had here yesterday a smoke and a, a spectro because we we are not using the output of that um, everything what we have our two oscillators filtered through tangents um, that output goes into Camilla and uh, that processes it and that's what we hear and one thing I discovered this evening uh, is if you pull back the cutoff right? if you like dial it down you get a much quieter patch but still with a lot of little details going on. And then when you open the cutoff a bit, more will come through, it will get louder, it will get more detail. And for that bubbling sound, if you remember from last time, you need to really open the cutoff on the first filter, on the first FM operator. It becomes noisier. Still not really that bubbling. And you need to go to like one o'clock, two o'clock, somewhere there. And there it is. Except it's not as constant as in uh, the previous patch because I'm also adding some pitch information to the first operator, some vocal prerogative here. Um, and I'm using a sequential switch for that because I don't want a constant input of that information. I like the bubbles as they are just 
right? some modulation, some change, some variation is a good thing. So what am I feeding it? This. The X output of the Rustler uh, tractor, which also goes to various other places. Um, and then as it steps through and the different inputs, uh, it then comes to this, which is the uh, wave shaper output. And finally, it will get to step number six, which takes its input from, again, this X output, but also mixed with our booty shifter, pitch shifter, and uh, no, here we are, the Y output from our Lorenz strange attractor. So these all mixed together are our sixth output. And as you see, sometimes that's in audio range, and other times it will be in uh, low frequency oscillation range. And then obviously, as you can see here, I have several steps. I'm still keeping it at eight steps, but five of our steps are empty, which means no full productive input, which means we get the regular bubbling that we had last time. Okay, what else have I done? I've added this frivolous, what's it called? Wave head, wave head from JW modules, just to fill up these two rows. Um, and on this side, you see there's a couple more sequential switches. There is one more wave folder here. And there's a Bernoulli gate and two PLL modules. First time I'm using those in a patch, I think. I know I've played around with them before, but I haven't really used them. But here, uh, first of all, I'm modulating the pitch parameter on Camilla. So pitch shifting our time stretching that's going on in this module. But again, I'm using here a sequential switch and only occasionally I am actually modulating this parameter. So here in steps uh, three and seven. And then you get that lovely crackling. I really love that. Okay, um, and this comes from this PLL. I have two PLL modules that are actually modulating each other. Uh, up the uh, opacity a bit so you can see where the cables are going. Although it's getting like real spaghetti here. Um, so these face lo loop modules are uh, modeled on hardware. I'm not going to explain it because I barely get it myself. Uh, you can look it up. There is a, a lovely video explaining the hardware PLL module as well. So if you want to dive into that, it's certainly worth it. Uh, as you can see here, I have a square and it basically has three parts. The upper part is the internal VCO, then a phase comparator, comparator, comparator. Uh, and a low pass filter. Anyway, so the VCO has like a pulse width modulated square wave and I'm using the square wave out to go into the signal in of the second PLL which has its own uh, frequency here set higher than this one see everything is a little bit different and uh, then the output, the final output of this module goes into the signal in of the first module. So they're modulating each other. And you can see here these flickering lights when they are in phase, which is sometimes, but very intermittently. Okay, so the output of this goes into a sequential switch and the other input on the sequential switch is taken from here, the Y 
uh, put off our wrestler strange attractor which is uh, very slow uh, the slowest speed here so functioning as an LFO it actually goes up all the way to uh, audio range I believe um, but I haven't tried this as an oscillator that might be something for tomorrow Um, the stepping on the sequential switch comes from our clock here, but divided by four, so it's slower. And uh, the Bernoulli gate only lets it through sometimes. The um, the P parameter here, what you call it again. Anyway, the likelihood that it's firing off is modulated from here, uh, from the X output of the Rissler attractor. Alright, the Bernoulli code is also used to drive the other two sequential switches. And this one that we haven't talked about yet, this output goes into our blend parameter. And you hear that right now. Okay. And altogether we get this lovely industrial sound. Not sure if you can still call this ambient. It is quite noisy. And busy. Either way, I really like it and I'm thinking of uh, recording a long version of this with a slow modulation of these uh, filter cutoffs. Because all in all I've been listening to this for hours now is possible when you have holidays. I mean, isn't that amazing? So much little details that go in there. And the beauty is with these strange attractors, they never completely uh, repeat themselves. It's chaotic. It's they stay within a certain range, but it never repeats itself. Yesterday I had the, uh, the scopes, the full scopes, and today I've made them even bigger. Actually, that wasn't yesterday, it was two days ago when I did. Yesterday was a terrible day. But, never mind. We're all good now. So, um, on the left side you see the Rissler Strange Attractor doing its thing and on the right side it's the Lorenz Strange Attractor. I was just reading about it and there are a few other Strange Attractors also that look very interesting. I think these are just lovely for an LFO. And uh, like I said, maybe tomorrow I should try them as oscillators.
Anyway, I think I'm off to recording a longer version of this. And see uh, what the result of that is. And if anybody else likes it. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, keep calm, patch on.